I'm looking at my checking account, like, where did all the money go? Welcome back, my name is Shope, founder of Culture Rich World. I am an Afrofusion recording artist, an entrepreneur, and lover of all things creativity, culture, and business. With this channel, I have two goals, to give you good vibes with the music and great insight as I share the many lessons I'm learning as I journey through life, both personally and professionally. So in a previous video, I told the story of how I made my first $100,000 all profit through a real estate flip, and this took about seven months. In this video, I'm going to tell you how I subsequently spent that $100,000 in about six months. So maybe Make sure you watch until the end because this whole experience taught me a very valuable lesson not only about making money but keeping the money and I'd love to share that with you. Oh boy, let's get into it. So the first thing I did was I went out and I found the biggest, shiniest chain I could find out. I'll, I'll show you in a second. No, come on. Of course I didn't do that. That would be very, very stupid. But in all seriousness, one of the first things I did was I put away $20,000 as a tax fund in anticipation of when the tax man would also come for his and you know he did this episode is sponsored by the Canada Revenue Agency I don't know who you are I don't know what you want if you are looking for ransom I can tell you I don't have money but what I do have are a very particular set of skills skills I've acquired over a very long career skills that make me a nightmare for people like you Pay your taxes. That'll be the end of it. I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you don't, I will look for you. I will find you. You gotta love the CRA or the IRS or whatever your tax authority is. Anyways, you take that hundred and right off the top, subtract 20. Next, we gave away about $5,000 to some charities and organizations that we love. And by we, I mean my wife and I. Then the spending started. One of the first things we bought right away was a car. Now, hold up, hold up, hold up. Before you cut me up, it was not a fancy car. Quick backstory. Prior to this new car, my wife and I had been driving our 2008 Nissan Altima for about six years up until that point. When we purchased the Altima in 2015, our goal was to drive this thing into the ground. We figured if we take care of it, do regular maintenance, oil changes, things like that, it could last us a while. And we would not look to replace the car until maintenance became kind of like significant and reoccurring. Like I said, we were ready to drive this thing into the ground. So by late 2020, early 2021, right before making this 100K, we still weren't looking to upgrade the car because it was still going strong 300,000 kilometers later. But two things happened. First, the car lost the cylinder. So every time we started it, it literally sounded like a motocross bike. Second thing was we had our third child. So this five-seater motocross sounding sedan just wasn't it anymore. It wasn't big enough and maintenance was kind of getting ridiculous. So we actually needed a new, bigger car. We wanted to get something that met the needs of having kids. So it had to be at least seven seats, but we also wanted it to look decent. But God forbid, I get a minivan. I remember actually praying, God, I don't want a minivan. I need me a big body. I can't be out here in these streets pushing a minivan as an artist. I gotta get something a little nicer. You know what I'm saying? And would you know, God answered. We ended up getting a 2014 Hyundai Santa Fe XL. And fortunately, the former owners took really good care of the car and got like every luxury upgrade they were probably offering them. It was almost like they offered them and they took it. So we have um, leather interiors, heated seats, heated steering wheels, panoramic sunroof, power tailgate, both system, pretty much every upgrade the car had. Hyundai, sponsor the boy. So there you go. We got a nice, practical, but luxury family vehicle that's not a minivan, and we paid $22,000 for this. I gotta say, it felt really amazing purchasing the car and paying for it in full. Writing out a $22,000 check, knowing that that mug ain't gonna bounce. That felt really good. One of the things that my wife and I do in trying to be financially responsible is not buying things we can't afford. And so thank Thankfully, we have never had to finance any of the cars that we own. We have only ever gotten cars that we knew we could afford to pay off right off the bat in that moment. And if that meant that we had to take the bus for a season of time until we had saved for it, then that is exactly what we did. That's what we did for the Altima that we got six years prior. And when we needed a new, bigger car, we were able to pay for 22 racks up front. So that was a great experience. Next, during this time of making the 100K, we were also in the 
process of moving houses. So between moving expenses, paying first and last month's rent for the new house we're about to rent, buying some new furniture, as well as just some additional things, all of that came up to about $12,000. Yes, Toronto is a very expensive city. Next, we set up our emergency fund. Some of the financial advice we got was to always have an emergency fund that anywhere between three to six months of your living expenses on hand, ready to go. And then after your emergency fund is taken care of, then you can deploy the rest into investments if you can. So this is exactly what we did. We put $17,000 into an emergency fund and then started to invest the rest. My first investment was private lending. And I don't mean like personal friends and stuff. No, I mean like legit structured, institutionalized type situation. Believe it or not, there's a whole world out there of people who need money to complete projects and are looking for private lenders and in exchange are willing to pay very healthy profits. So I put $15,000 to us in private lending and thankfully within about a year and a half, that money doubled. I then took $10,000 and I put that into the stock market. Boy, yeah, I put $10,000 into the stock market. So everybody knows the stock market isn't doing so great right now, but I'm not concerned. I'm not concerned because I mitigate my risk by developing a diversified investment strategy. So I have short-term investments that are one year or less. I have midterm that are two to five years and long-term that are like five plus year investments. So for me, the stock market is a long-term play. When I went into stocks, I went into it with a 20 to 30 year horizon, knowing that for the stocks I'm buying, I have no intention of pulling that money out anytime soon. So I invested in blue chip stocks. So I have Apple, I have Meta, I kind of regret buying Meta, but I have it. And I have Google. I also have VTI, which is an ETF. That's a basket of stocks that tracks the performance of the entire US stock market. And this is in fact my best performing asset in my stock portfolio. I also invested in a company called Taiwanese Semiconductor Manufacturing TSM, and they are world's major microchip manufacturing companies. And they supply companies like Apple and Microsoft and other tech companies with microchips. So chances are, as long as these other giants remain in business, TSM will likely also remain in business. And so when I went into stocks, I made sure I try to pick the stocks that I believe have a long capacity blue chip stocks. I don't really do a lot of speculative investing with stocks, again, because for me, that is a 20 to 30 year horizon. I need long-term stability with my stocks, even with short-term volatility. So when the market began tanking and it looks like I've lost some of the 10K, I'm not panicking because I know this is just how the market behaves. And I have a good feeling that given enough time, these specific stocks I purchased will rebound and go up in value. So I kind of right now, I'm just kind of forgetting about it and letting time do its thing. In fact, that I actually like to buy some more, not financial advice. Then after that 10K I put into stocks, I put another 7,000 into drum roll crypto. No, God. No, God, please. No, 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 no. <laughs> Boy. Yeah, 7K in crypto. That admittedly was one of my most risky investments and we all know what's happening in the crypto world right now. And if you don't know, it is a bloodbath. Everybody has taken losses similar to stocks and actually worse for a lot of people. That said, even with my losses, I'm also not panicking about my crypto portfolio for two reasons. Number one, I went into crypto knowing it is risky and knowing I could lose it all. I don't wanna lose it all, but I was mentally prepared if that were to happen. Second of all, to decrease my probability of loss. Like stocks, I invested in what I believe are top blue chip cryptocurrencies. So when I first got into the crypto world, I was playing with all of these different coins and NFTs. I still believe in NFTs, by the way, and protocols and DAOs and all of these different things. But after some time, I ultimately consolidated my crypto portfolio into only three things, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Ripple XRP. And thankfully, I did this right before the market crash really happened. Like literally, I redistributed my allocations from some speculative assets to these three and right after watch the market take a nosedive. Had I done this like 48 hours later, I would have ended up losing more money than I lost when the market crashed. But like I said, I'm not panicking because of what I'm invested in. I can do another video later as to why I picked these three specific currencies, Bitcoin, Ether, XRP, or I should call them protocols. But for now, suffice to say, I believe these three are some of the strongest out there with regards to utility and use case. 
case. Not just strong with use case. I believe these three also have the strongest capacity to escape regulation, which I believe is ultimately what is going to happen to the crypto world. I believe a lot of crypto is going to be regulated out of existence. So when I look at where crypto is going and I look at which coins I believe have staying power, I believe it's going to be either all three of these or at the minimum one of them. So for me, I decided to mitigate my risk in what is already a very risky investment category crypto by not being a maxi and putting all my chips in one, but instead conservatively diversify into two or three that I believe have long-term capacity. And if I'm wrong and all of them go to nothing, then that means fundamentally crypto as we know it has gone to nothing. Like if Bitcoin, Ether, and XRP all go to nothing, then crypto as we know it is gone. But I just don't think that's going to happen. The technology is too advanced and the cat is out the bag and you are not about to put that boy back in the bag. Everybody already knows about it at this point. So for this reason, I believe crypto will continue, but there will be an atrophying in the industry. And so I'm in Bitcoin, I'm in Ether, and I'm in XRP. And if only one of them goes really well, then that'll cover my losses for the other two and then some. And then if all three do really well, well, then that's a whole nother conversation. You just might never hear from me again at that point. <laughs> Moving on. My final investment was $10,000 into my own personal business, Culture Rich World. Culture Rich World is a premium clothing brand that's like the fashion side of my music brand. And the mission of the company is to use fashion and music as a way to build bridges and connect people of different cultures. So getting inventory, setting up the website, a little bit of hiring, some marketing, and just getting that whole thing going cost me about $10,000. Now, technically, you don't need that much to start a clothing brand, but I personally believe that anything worth doing is worth doing in excellence. So the same level of excellence I bring to my music, I bring to all of my businesses, and the clothing brand was no exception to that. I didn't just want to do artist merch. I wanted to do a premium line that works with my personal brand, but that can also stand on its own. So I bet on myself and I invested 10 racks of my own money into my business with a belief that in the long run, it will pay off as long as I continue to deliver great products to my customers and as my personal brand continues to grow as well. So guys, join the Culture Rich World mailing list, get some special benefits, and then go back to the shop and pick up something. By doing this, you'll be supporting a creator and a small business with spreading a positive global message. So that is how I spent my first $100,000. You'll see that I didn't really spend it. It's really more a combination of savings and investments, some of which have already yielded me a return and others which I believe, given enough time, will in fact yield me a return. Now, if you've been following the numbers closely, you'll notice that they add up to more than $100,000. And that's because there was some additional flipping during this time, some micro deals. So you take a certain amount of money, you do some magic with it, it makes more money. Then you take that principle plus some of the profit and you put that into something else. And so yeah, my entire philosophy with money is to keep as little cash on hand as is necessary to be prepared for sudden changes and to take advantage of opportunities, but then invest the rest so it can multiply for you. But in in that investing, try to do that in the most prudent way possible. Investing your money also has this interesting psychological effect on you because I look at my checking in my savings accounts now and I don't see a lot of money in there. Just a couple months worth of money. Then I get nervous like where did all the money go? I need to go make some more. Almost forgetting that I have these appreciating assets or maybe being aware of them but not being able to access them quickly. Just a way of, it just keeps me on my toes. Two quick lessons from all of this. Number one, don't be in a rush. Overall, I believe I have been as wise as possible with regards to how I've dispersed this initial 100k. Time will ultimately tell. That said, because this was my first experience with, with having this much money in one go, I did feel that rush that you hear people talk about. That feeling of like money burning a hole in your pocket, I felt that. For me, the rush wasn't in spending on liabilities or depreciating things. For me, the rush was to multiply it as quickly as possible to invest it. And that sounds like a good thing, except it can lead to impulsivity and a lack of due diligence. I don't regret investing in crypto like I mentioned earlier, but I do acknowledge that before I consolidated into only three assets, I was kind of loose with buying this one and speculating on this other one, all because it was this frantic fear of missing out on the next opportunity to 1 million X my money in the next three days. <laughs> 
that's the crypto world for you. So even though I did exercise some restraints, I did lose a little bit more than I had to because I was simply moving too fast. And this is the world of investing. You move quickly, but not in a rush. And there is a difference. There are opportunities that require quick execution, like purchasing the house that made me the 100K in the first place. Go watch that video. But don't let FOMO be the reason you put your hard earned money into something. There should be due diligence, a measure of understanding and preparedness. And if you don't have these things in place, let it go. Yes, you might miss out, but guess what? There will always be a new way or a new opportunity to make money. As a friend of mine likes to say, the mother of deals is not dead yet. She's still very alive. Second lesson, as of the recording of this video, the stock market is down, crypto is down, real estate is down, and inflation is at record highs. All of this points to a recession. Many experts say it's inevitable and others say, in fact, it has already started. So I'm doing some very specific things in this season to prepare myself and my family for the worst of it, which I believe is still to come. If you wanna know what I'm doing, then put get ready in the comments type get ready in the comments and if enough of you do that i'll make a video about my recession preparation strategies now question for you yes you come closer did you get value from this video? I certainly hope you did. If this is true and you did get value, then why don't you support in a real and tangible way? First, the free way. Like, comment, share this with a friend. Also free, smash the subscribe button and hit the bell notification. Third way you can support this channel, and this one right here is only for the elite. Join the Culture Rich World mailing list. Like I said before, this is not just artist merch. This is a bona fide brand with pristine quality. And in fact, we're already stocked at a high-end retail store. Join the list, you will thank me. Being on the list comes with many special benefits like early access to drops, and we've got some really cool drops coming very, very soon, private events, special pricing, and a whole lot more. Links are in the description. Now, check these music videos for some good vibes and this for some more amazing insights. I'll see you next time. I'll admit it. Yeah, I get it. You been holding me down for a minute. I've been taking too long, I'll admit it. Yeah, I'll admit it.